Caligula was one of Rome's craziest emperors. Once, at a dinner party, he reportedly burst into wild laughter. When asked to explain the reason for laughing, his answer was utterly terrifying. What exactly did the sadistic and vengeful emperor say? The answer will definitely surprise you. Caligula was notoriously violent and his insane behavior started much earlier than when he became emperor. In fact, even the way he became emperor was suspicious to say the least. Caligula allegedly committed some truly horrifying acts, including incest and murder. In fact, there is reason to believe that incest may have, well, run in the family. More on that later. Despite his insane behavior, Caligula did show mercy to his uncle Claudius. Why did he spare this particular family member? This uncharacteristic act of charity would change the course of the Roman Empire forever. His real name was Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, and he was related to Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus, but their leadership styles were rather different. Coming from such an illustrious line of generals should have meant that Caligula would be a great leader. So why is he remembered as extremely cruel and weak? Was he hiding a secret that made him so paranoid he became a brutal and sadistic tyrant? When young Gaius was growing up, his general father would dress him in a small version of a soldier's uniform whenever he brought him on a campaign. The troops started calling him Caligula, which means little boots. Caligula's mother, Agrippina the Elder, was a famously tough and courageous woman. She even went out on campaign with his father. Agrippina often and openly expressed her dislike for her son's predecessor, Emperor Tiberius. Unsurprisingly, insulting the most powerful man on earth had dire consequences. Eventually, Tiberius had her exiled. Years later, Tiberius's son died, perhaps murdered by a political rival. Suddenly, Tiberius had no heir. In 31 AD, he summoned Caligula to his pleasure island of Capri and adopted the boy. Tiberius was responsible for the deaths of Caligula's parents, but Caligula still said yes to becoming emperor. The question is, why did the emperor name Caligula his successor? According to contemporary accounts, Caligula was a gifted actor and he managed to hide his dark feelings very well. Caligula had an innate viciousness. He enjoyed watching executions and indulged in scandalous behavior at night. Shockingly, Tiberius knew exactly what kind of person Caligula was. The aging emperor once said, I am nursing a viper in Rome's bosom. While living as Tiberius's guest, Caligula befriended Nevius Sertorius Macro, the head of the powerful Praetorian Guard. One historian, Tacitus, wrote that one fateful night, Macro smothered the dying Tiberius with a pillow to make sure that Caligula rose to the throne. Another historian, Suetonius, claimed that Caligula himself ended Tiberius' life and ensured his own rise to the throne. We'll never know what really happened on that dark day, but the result was clear. Tiberius was dead and Caligula took the throne. Caligula took every step to ensure his popularity when he became emperor. At Tiberius' funeral, he delivered a passionate and weepy speech in the deceased emperor's honor. He definitely knew how to work a crowd. The people of Rome had extremely high hopes for Caligula's rule. After all, he came from a pretty amazing pedigree. And he lived up to those greatest hopes, at least at first. He freed unjustly imprisoned citizens, gave bonuses to military men, and eliminated a highly unpopular tax. Approximately six to seven months after taking power, Caligula suddenly fell ill, possibly by poisoning. He recovered, but by all accounts, the illness broke something in his mind. Shortly after, he began having his family members killed, beginning with his cousin and heir, Gemellus, and possibly even his grandmother. Some claimed he poisoned her, while others said it was suicide. In the chilling days following Caligula's near-fatal illness, he had nearly every single one of his close family members executed. One of the few to be spared his wrath was his feeble uncle Claudius, 
whom Caligula chose to keep around as an object of ridicule. Remember Macro, the Praetorian guard who helped make Caligula emperor? Well, as it turns out, no one was safe from Caligula's wild mood swings. When it seemed as though Caligula might die of illness, Macro made some political maneuvers to try to save his own career. When Caligula recovered, he discovered Macro's plans and condemned his one-time ally to a horrifying fate. Caligula forced Macro to commit suicide. Obviously, Caligula had very little regard for human life. In one twisted story, he supposedly meant to sacrifice a bull to the gods by hitting it over the head with a huge mallet. At the last minute, he had an even worse idea. He turned and struck the priest instead. He then apparently laughed at the priest as he died. Definitely not the kind of man you'd want to have absolute power. Even though Caligula's heritage made him emperor, he was far from grateful to his famous ancestors. Maybe he felt like he couldn't live up to his name, or maybe he just hated attention being drawn away from him, but Caligula deeply resented his famous ancestors. He even claimed that his grandfather Augustus had an incestuous affair with his own daughter. Caligula allegedly had a voracious appetite in the bedroom, and as emperor, nobody would deny him. Historians wrote that he would sleep with his own officials' wives, then brag about it in public in front of them. According to Suetonius, Caligula was extremely interested in the Egyptian practice of using incest to protect royal bloodlines. The emperor decided to do the same and embarked on incestuous relationships with all three of his sisters in the hope of perfectly preserving his royal blood. Although Suetonius's The Twelve Caesars was written 80 years after Caligula's death, so it may have been an exaggeration on his part. Caligula insisted that every Roman take an official oath of allegiance, not just to himself, but also to his sisters. The oath went, I will not value my life or that of my children less than I do the safety of the emperor Gaius and his sisters. Maybe Suetonius was not exaggerating after all. As befitting a gilded emperor, Caligula absolutely loved gold. He allegedly liked to spread gold coins all over the ground and walk on them with his bare feet. Some stories even say he pulled a Scrooge McDuck and waded in them like water. And as if that wasn't enough, he also had his dinner table set with golden loaves of bread. Caligula thought of himself as a god. While he was still alive, he erected a temple dedicated to himself and placed a like-sized golden statue of himself inside. Rome's wealthiest citizens would make offerings to the emperor there. Gifts included flamingos, peacocks, and other exotic animals that the Romans greatly admired. Caligula didn't just think of himself as a god, he resented the actual gods for being worshipped alongside him. He ordered the heads removed from statues of various gods all across Rome and replaced them all with his own likeness, because I'm sure that fooled everybody. Even as a grown man, Caligula despised his nickname, so he did what any self-respecting emperor would do. He gave himself a new one, and as you can imagine, his choice wasn't exactly humble. He called himself Jupiter after the Roman king of the gods and forced senators to refer to him as such. One of the most pervasive legends about Caligula claims that he once went to war with Neptune, the god of the sea, after being forced to abandon a military campaign to invade Britain. The story says that he couldn't return to Rome without a victory of some kind, so he declared war on Neptune and ordered his men to whip the waves. He then had the men collect seashells as spoils of war. Caligula's first years in office were erratic and very expensive. Rome started running out of money fast, so Caligula, who now had access to absolute power, discovered new and creative ways to secure funds. One of his favorites was to accuse someone of treason or some other crime and have them fined, imprisoned, or even executed then, of course, all their estates and possessions were his for the taking. Unfortunately for Caligula, falsely accusing people and stealing their stuff didn't bring in nearly enough money to pay off his debts, 
so he had to resort to even more ridiculous methods. By far his most devious get-rich-quick scheme took place at one of his favorite haunts, the gladiatorial arena. Caligula started auctioning away the lives of gladiators during live events. Tell me how we want to see him die, and we'll do it for a price. Caligula loved the gladiatorial games. The games were useful not only for public exhibition and political reputation, but also to serve up Roman justice. Criminals and slaves were often sacrificed to vicious beasts for entertainment, but apparently that wasn't enough for someone as bloodthirsty as Caligula. One day, the emperor allegedly found the day's activities to be a little… dull, so he ordered his guards to throw an entire section of the crowd to the beasts to liven things up. But Caligula wasn't all bad, he really loved his horse in Catatus, so much so that he gave him his own house with a marble stall and a major made from ivory. Caligula even planned to make the horse a consul as an expression of his total power. About halfway through his reign, Caligula broke with the Senate and started using every opportunity to humiliate them. According to historians, around 39 AD, he removed and replaced all of the consuls without asking the Senate's approval. He would also reportedly force senators to run alongside his chariot dressed in their full robes. Another time, he called the consuls into his room in the middle of the night and forced them to watch him sing and dance while barely dressed. Remember the dinner party during which Caligula randomly burst into joyous laughter? Never a good sign. When his guests asked him what made him laugh, the emperor replied, I've just thought that I only have to give the word and you'll all have your throats cut. Hilarious, right? He soon became one of the most hated people in the entire empire. But did this bother him? Not at all. He simply said, let them hate me, so long as they fear me. Caligula allegedly carried two notebooks with him wherever he went. They contained the names of people whom he wanted to prosecute, imprison, or execute. Rome didn't let Caligula's cruel and disturbing behavior go unnoticed. Resentment grew in nearly every level of government, but in 40 AD, Caligula finally went too far. What terrible thing did Caligula do? He decided to move. This may not seem like that big of a deal after all the disturbing things he had done, but had he succeeded, his plans would have altered history forever. No matter how hard he tried, in Rome, most people still only saw him as an emperor. But he knew that in Egypt, people had spent millennia worshipping their rulers as divine. That idea was too good to pass up. In 40 AD, he began making plans to permanently move the capital of the empire to Alexandria. Caligula's plan was the last straw for many powerful people in Rome. If he moved to Alexandria, Rome and the people who lived there would lose their political influence. Cassius Correa, one of Caligula's own guardsmen, hatched a dark plan to put an end to Caligula's madness once and for all. On January 22, 41 AD, Correa and his fellow conspirators appeared outside of Caligula's palace. According to reports, Correa was the first to stab Caligula. But soon a crowd swarmed the emperor, viciously cutting him down where he stood. Strangely enough, the final moments of Caligula, real first name Gaius Julius Caesar, looked a whole lot like the final moments of his ancestor, Gaius Julius Caesar. Both were dictators with absolute power, and they were both stabbed 30 times by a group of conspirators led by a man named Cassius. After killing Caligula, his assassins tracked down his wife and their young daughter, determined to eliminate any trace of the emperor's bloodline. Next, the conspirators went looking for Caligula's sickly uncle Claudius. Luckily for him, a sympathetic soldier found him and the Praetorian Guard hurried him out of the city to safety. Despite Caligula's madness, the Roman military still liked the idea of an empire. They rallied around Claudius and declared him the new emperor, and thus the empire continued. Many historians, both ancient and modern, have tried to explain what made Caligula so mad. 
Some have speculated that he may have suffered from epilepsy or as Suetonius called it, the falling sickness. Some writers believe that Caligula lived in constant fear of having a seizure and this made him paranoid and cruel. Whatever the reason for his deranged ruling style, by the time Caligula was killed, he was so hated that the Senate pushed to have him completely erased from Roman history. They ordered the destruction of his statues and public inscriptions, and his coins were pulled from circulation and melted down. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more fascinating content.